All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends, and don't forget to share the link and the video after you finish watching. And for sure, you can download the video. Today, our topic is about ju justice. You know, justice is a big word, but justice can be injustice. And many people, they use the word justice to do unjust. Many things in this earth is done in the name of justice, evil things, ugly stuff. Murder, rape, killing, theft. But yet, the title in the top is justice. So today we are going to discuss the justice, which is Islam claim. And I'm going to open my Skype in case there is any Muslim he would like to tell us about the justice which he think it exists in Islam. We always like to hear Muslims, and for sure, uh, please just be nice and don't you use a bad language, and you are welcome to share your thought and prove your belief. You know, talk is cheap, and anyone can say anything. I can say I am the one who created justice in this earth. You can say the same. She can say the same. Everybody can say whatever he wants. But the question is, how much truthful the claim is? You know, all of us, we knew that the biggest migration come from Islamic countries to the land of what is called supposedly the Kuffar. The Muslims themselves, they leave their lands because there is injustice or injustice. Where was a justice of Islam during the time of Muhammad forget about today they might say today Muslim countries are not practicing Islam they might say well nobody practice Islam these days they might say nobody is following Allah these days no problem so what was the justice of Allah you see if we go in the Quran or we go in the hadith or we go what Islam teach as an example this is one of the forms of the justice of Allah Muhammad teaching that Allah he created the black people to go to hell and white people to go to heaven what kind of justice this justice is this is a God who believe that just because you are white you go to heaven and he created you white and because you are white by creation you go to heaven as you see so Allah he hit the shoulder of Adam and from it emitted uh, the offspring of Adam which is white like ants and he struck uh, struck his left shoulder and there emitted from it the black offspring as if they were circle he then said to those who they are you know omitted from the right shoulder go to paradise and those from the left shoulder which means the black go to hell and I don't care that is one of the forms of justice of Islam which is nothing but an ugly racism because being a black or white have nothing to do with who is going to go to heaven and is going to go to hell that's absolutely very ugly false teaching where was the justice of Allah when we see Muhammad saying as an example that women uh, they are half a brain as the Quran said and they are not equal to the man and even Muhammad he made it clear that a nation who led by a woman they will never be successful so while Persia 1400 years ago they have a queen Muhammad he was teaching his followers that we shall not allow such a thing to happen women they cannot be rulers because supposedly Muhammad he confirmed that women are half a brain now here you need to ask yourself uh, about the justice the way it is I mean did God he created the women this way I mean if Muhammad claimed that women are half a brain are they created half a brain now if they are created half a brain uh, uh, this is the fault of who I mean where is the justice here <laughs> you know if you go uh, if you go in uh, in different hadith Muhammad he said that most of women they will go to hell 
and he claimed the reason for that uh, because simply they have two problem uh, they have uh, menstruation and they have a lack of intellect they have two deficiencies as you see in the front of you one problem is being uh, uh, you know lacking of wisdom and the other one they have deficiency in their brain and their religion the deficiency in their brain is supposedly proving that man uh, every man is equal to two women in the court of Islam the deficiency of religion that Muslim women she have her period and because of that she is not equal hello hello yes yeah hi you are live on air what do you like to say to us mr. Yusuf yeah I left this cult you left Islam yeah all yeah. right and what do you like it's to say just... what do you like to share with us yeah I mean I just read the Bible all it took is just reading the Bible once the New Testament is beautiful compared to what the Quran is Hmm. And the Quran, there but, so but why, why you left Islam? I talked to you a few days ago. Yeah, I remember. I always spoke, and we show. Uh, you are the one I was showing your reference, right? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And when I check those references, it's strange how many contradictions there are. Right. It's like plenty, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. What about so your family, I, Yusuf? Your your family, they are they're still Muslims, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can talk to them about like about it now because it's gonna end up bad. Hmm. Well, take yeah, your time. So, I mean, just show them what you learned, and uh, slowly, slowly, things will work. Yeah. I mean, if there like any questions you have, go to the Sheikh of the Mosque and all that. So I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do that. Did any Muslim like, says to you uh, how you leave Islam? Did you tell any Muslim around you that you left Islam? No, I did not tell anyone yet. Hmm, okay. Well, you said, wanna... uh, I'm happy for you that you left Islam. And uh, um, if you if you remind me, did you accept Christianity yet, or you accept? Right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. Yeah. Forgive I me did. because you know I have too many people speak to me, and sometimes it's confusing to remember. Yeah, who I, know, I, know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I know. Well, I'm happy and, for uh, you. And yeah, I like last time I told you I'll just read more about it. Right. Okay. And when I did, it was so many inconsistencies that's the problem like the people i know now like my friends and all that they don't know what's in their book right they do not know exactly. like they just go by what the sheikh told them what the, like teachers tell them in school and all that they don't know the truth you get me yeah well, this is what we are doing here, Yusuf. We are just sharing, uh, you know, what uh, what people need to know, so those who they are watching, they can learn and they can go check out by themselves, as you did yourself, because you know, if yeah. you, you know, uh, I, I, there is tons of videos made by Muslims, but you notice that the first thing there, there is dishonesty, even when they speak against the Bible or they speak about the Quran, they exactly. they, they lay down false statement about their religion. And as an example, uh, scientific miracle of the Quran. You know, I could, I could not find one of them is true. So they and fabricate. The Bible, I could find many. Yeah. And you, by the way, like, you will not find a yeah. Christian speaking about scientific miracles in the Bible, even though we can find tons of things to speak about, which is fit with science. As an example, the Bible says uh, uh, that the earth is hanged on nothing and like a globe in the space, empty space. But but this yes. is, but we don't uh, we don't care for this because, you know, uh, uh, if you either you believe in science or you believe in God because sometimes like as an example if I say scientifically is it true that a woman she never know a man she will have a child the answer no correct yeah so if Muslims and Christians believe that Mary she have no man so wh why you are why you are became so much obsessed with science trying to fool people with it if you believe don't agree with science you know, either you agree, like scientists these days, they say that the Earth is a whatever billion of year age, 
uh, you know we don't you know we don't agree with that or a human being is created by uh, you know development of uh, cells or whatever yeah. so either you agree with science or you don't agree with science so uh, yeah but because islam is bankrupt and they have nothing to prove their religion with so sometimes they want to find Muhammad. Yeah, sometimes they want to find yeah. Muhammad to be a prophet in the Bible. They could not make him a prophet in their book. They want to make him a prophet in our book. Uh, uh, suddenly they want to they want to make Quran as a book of science, because they have nothing. The Islam is not really a religion. Islam is a collection of ideas, and Muslims trying to make those ideas come to life and to make it look it's good. This is why if you go right now and search for uh, Allah justice as we are showing. We will find thousands of articles, but where is the justice of Allah? Show me. There is none. There is none. Yeah, where, but, uh, you see, I was actually, I'm just disappointed that you are the one who called me because I was expecting a Muslim to call me to show me justice. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, you, know, you yes, are agreeing with yes, me, which, yes. is not, which is not what I want. I want, I, a, I want someone to say, no, you're a liar. I want to show you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah, so, so maybe that's, maybe that's Yusuf, we can maybe Yusuf, you can get us some uh, some people to call us and say, hey, call this guy and be, be, uh, help me to go back to Islam. You see, Muslims, listen to this. Yusuf is talking to me. He left Islam and he became a Christian now. But maybe if you call me, prove me wrong. Maybe you can get him back to Islam. Who want to do that? If there's any Muslim. That's the that? thing. It's like uh, when I look at a place like Saudi Arabia, for example, it's horrible. It's like everything there is. I'm pretty sure it's hell to live in because it's like everything you do, you're going to get punished. You walk on the street, you're going to get punished. You like, there is nothing you can do. And they call that Sharia law. Well, you know, in Saudi it's Arabia, like, right. actually, actually, let me tell you, uh, in Saudi Arabia, it's the most lousy country ever in the world. You can do everything. But outside, you should not do it outside. You know, even Muhammad, he said, uh, uh, like a stature, which means if you... If you do something, don't don't speak about it. Just do it under under the blanket. So, uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, in fact, drugs is all over, prostitution, alcohol, people drink, people have parties, uh, uh, gay. So and there's lesbian. no point. Yeah, but don't do it. That. Just don't do it in public. So when you do it in public, suddenly everybody became religious. Suddenly, you know. Uh, it's a it's yeah. a it's a land of hypocrisy. You know the the kings, the family, the royal family, parties, uh, alcohol, whiskey, black money. Everything it's for you money. want. Yeah, everything you want. But uh, but then just don't do it in public. But so the outside is a very Islamic country. But if you go, you know, in the in the in the back door, you will find that there is a different story. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, yes, I'm, like I'm, I'm I'm glad you called me because I want to continue with my topic. And I want Muslims right. to call me, so I, I want to apologize oh, for I you. Can. You can call me later, no problem, you know. But uh, we want yeah, some yeah, Muslims I... to call us to 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 get me busted. <laughs> I mean, they can try to get you busted. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank All you for right. calling. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. You see, this is why I say always love Muslims. You know, don't never hate them because look at this, uh, Yusuf. If you if if you as a Christian you hate the Muslims. Then someone like Yusuf will not leave Islam and become a Christian, right? Because he will see, okay, well, I want to leave this cult, and then I want to join another cult who teach hate too. So what's the point of this? We don't want to be, you know, we don't want to be like uh, like Muhammad. So always be loving and be nice to the Muslims as much as you can. And I'm talking about Muslims who they are being nice to you and being, I mean, a normal human being. He is not a person trying to hurt you. So here. Uh, if you look in the front of us, Muhammad is claiming that women, they will go to hell because he claim that they have a lack of wisdom and they have a lack of religion. And the wisdom and religion is the reason for them to go to hell. That's why he says, give, give money, you know, give money, give money to me. Huh? You want to go? So Muhammad, he's trying to fool women uh, so he can take their, women, their, their money, uh, claiming that his God, the God of justice, told him when he went to the heaven that uh, women, the most of them, they will go to hell. And why? Because they have a lack of common sense, which means they are stupid, according to Muhammad. So because of that lack of common sense, Muhammad claimed, uh, they will go to hell. 
So what's wrong? The woman, she said to him, what's wrong uh, with our common sense and, and with religion? The Holy Prophet said, uh, your lack of common sense that can be well judged in the fact that in the evidence that of two women is equal to one man. And this is from the Quran. That the proof of the lack of common sense. So Muhammad is making it so clear. The Quran says that two women equal to one man to be witness. And by the way, Muslim women, she is not allowed to witness in any case of murder. Any case of capital punishment. Capital punishment mean can cause uh, blood, you know, which like cutting your hand, um, you know, cutting your feet, uh, cutting your neck, uh, killing you for uh, stoning to death. It's a, so any 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 kind of uh, those uh, uh, women they can only witness in the case of borrowing money only, and not only that, those women they have to go through a conditions approval, which mean women of you approve as the Quran says, of women of your choice. So Muhammad here is trying to prove to women when the winner with the women she said, what's wrong with our common sense? What are you talking about? So he says, isn't it in the Quran it says that one man is equal to two women? Hello. So. This is the lack of common sense. And here we need to ask, as long as Allah is the God of justice. And I'm not going to discuss if this is true or not. Uh, later, after we discuss it a little bit, I mean, let's explain it, we can go to who is the smart here. Is it justice that God, he created women according to Muhammad, and he created them with lack of common sense? And because he made them with lack of common sense, they will go to hell. <laughs> Have you ever heard of common sense like this before? You know what I mean? Who is the one who created the women? The Muslim, they will say Allah. Okay. Allah is the one who made the women. How he made them? He made them with lack of common sense. Okay. So now Allah, he made them have lack of common sense. And Allah, he forbid them from observing prayer or etc. things during, during, uh, during their menstruation. And because of that, they will go to hell. So who is the one who, who have a lack of common sense? It's Muhammad. You know what I mean? The one who have a lack of common sense is Muhammad. It's not the women. Because look at the stupidity here. This is this is a clear stupidity sign. It's like you know, just to make it simple for for somebody. Uh, I make cars, and I created two cars. One can go to the speed of two hundred, and one can go to the speed of one hundred. And then I say to the one who can go in the speed of one hundred, I will destroy you. I will crush you because you are slow. But you are the one who made me. In the speed of 100 I mean this is not fair so Muhammad he claimed that women they have deficiency in two things in intelligence and in religion the intelligence they cannot be equal in the court because women are half a brain and the deficiency in deficiency in religion because they have menstruation and because of that women they will go to hell so the stupidity here is so clear that it's not women who they are suffering from mental illness. It is the one who is coming with such a statement. It is you who made the women are not equal to the man as a witness in the court. Claiming that this is something against them. Who? Allah, he says that. So this is the, this is the justice of Allah. The justice of Allah that two men, one man is equal to two women in the court. And not only that, uh, women are not allowed to witness in any case except borrow one money. And this is supposedly proof that women are stupid. In fact, if you ask anyone, if you take, if you go with your wife, you know, to let us say a wedding party or something, occasion, and then you come back home and the children ask you what happened. The wife, she will tell you what everybody was wearing, what even the earring they have, the women, what even men they were wearing, the shoes they are wearing, the color they are wearing, the food they put on the tables, the perfume they have. If you ask the man, he will not remember the dish he ate. Is that correct? 
so how the man is equal one man is equal to two women in the case of witnessing when women she can give you a lot more details correct this is this is stupid everybody, everybody know that so here you see you notice that the injustice start from the early stage of Islam against women Islam discriminate women and the funny there's thousands of videos in YouTube about Islam give women their right as you see women it, during the time of Muhammad they were they became queens they are ruling countries during the time of Muhammad Persia was ruled by a woman this is during the time of Muhammad this is not long after so while Muhammad established a rule that women is half a brain and she is a stupid and she cannot even fit to anything except the kitchen in Persia women they were became rulers and since Islam entered into Persia until now how many ruler she was a queen in in uh, in Persia none zero that's it it's gone you see how Islam corrupt the mind of a human being a human being before Islam in Persia accept women to be a ruler have no problem with that actually there's many queens they rule in the Middle East before Islam you heard about Cleopatra you heard about uh, Zenobia you heard about uh, uh, this uh, this lady here that became the queen of uh, a huge empire Persia uh, I mean it was it was very well known at that time or Balkis, the, the 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 queen of Sheba you know so look what happened since Islam enter what happened so Islam fact you know the fact is Islam teach unjust and teach and common sense Muhammad is himself is suffering from lack of intellect because what he said to the women they will go to hell because they have menstruation and they have a lack of intelligence a proof that he is the one who have a lack of intellect uh, actually uh, I remember once uh, there's a hadith let me see if I can find it <coughs> uh, there is a man he came to uh, to visit Muhammad let us see if we can find it um, because this is a uh, this is kind of funny Um, I'm trying to find what where, where we can find this hadith. Uh, let me see, because you know I can find it in Arabic, but I want to find it in English because it's very funny, hilarious actually. All right, let us see. Here we go. If you read this hadith here, you uh, this is hilarious. Sit down and laugh. I was with the Messenger of Allah with, while uh, Maymuna was with him. Then Ibn Ummu Maktoum came. Ibn Ummu Maktoum is a person who is blind. If you remember, there's a chapter in the Quran. Uh, uh, it's, it's called the chapter of Abasa, which means he gave a very bad face. This is about this guy when this guy he came to Muhammad Muhammad he gave him a bad face because he's poor and he don't want to show the people of the the rich men of Quraysh who were visiting him that such a guy will come to his house you know Muhammad was ashamed of him and here you will see that Muhammad have a lack of wisdom and he is a very hypocrite man but look what happened so Ibn Maktoum came and it this has happened when we were ordered to observe the veil the Prophet said said observe 
observe the veil from him <laughs> we ask the, mess uh, the messenger of Allah <laughs> but isn't he blind <laughs> Have you ever heard of a madness like this? So Muhammad is talking about women. They have a lack of intellect and, and deficiency of of uh, of, uh, of intelligence. Who is the one have deficiency in intelligence here? The man is blind. And look what Muhammad he said now because they got him busted. It's too late. So he said, uh, 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 and they said to him, uh, uh, Master of Allah, isn't he blind? He cannot neither see us nor recognize us. The Prophet of Allah said, Are you both blind? Like what? <laughs> but Muslim women, they can see men. If you ask any Muslim man, they will say to you, Yes, our women, they can see with eyes, you know. Yeah, they have to wear hijab, but still they can see, you know. So what Muhammad is talking about? The man is blind. He will not see their legs. He will not see their hands. He will not see their face. He will not see their breast. What he will see? And this is showing you that this man is mentally ill. Because he have, you know, there's a there's an illness. Some men they have it. It's called the ownership of jealousy, because it's not really jealousy. It's ownership. So those women are his females. He is the rooster. When a rooster, he see different roosters coming. You know, he's go crazy. So Muhammad the rooster. Now he saw another male coming to the house, but the man he cannot even see who's there. But Muhammad he could not. Forget that he is the rooster. He want to own the females. They are his property. So where is the justice of Islam? Why Muhammad? Why Muhammad did not order Muslim men to, to wear veil? Women, they can see them too. Well, women, they can be tempted by men too. Who said that men are not handsome and good looking for women? Why only women she have to wear a veil and that supposedly will stop the problem? This will not stop the problem. Actually, as I know, Middle East is the most corrupt land because of the veil. Because simply your wife, she can sleep around and you cannot know. She can walk in front of you with the guy and you will not know her because she is wearing the veil. How do you know? All women in the street look the same. How you will know which one is your woman? I told you a story before about a guy who is very, very uh, a religious Muslim. And he have bars in the windows. He have metal door. He have the key. His wife don't have the key. She is jailed inside the house. And he will never allow to visit her, anyone to visit her, even from her family, unless he is home. A woman she come only when the husband is home and the husband is the one who opened the door he see a woman wearing a veil he call his wife she say she have a friend take her to your room the women she take the the the, the, the women to her room and etc for like six months and then one day the sister of the husband came and because she is a female he told her go and join them the, the women are in the bedroom she went there she found his wife with the guy who was wearing a veil to see her and the stupid husband, he was opening the door. They were having sex in his present. And he was making them tea and coffee. And he put next to the door. And he did not know that inside it's not a female. Because he cannot get in. It's haram. It's haram, brother. He can't see who's inside the room. You know? So the veil was a way of corruption, not a way of protection. It is the most corrupt society ever. Ever everything is done under the veil. We continue. The justice of Allah. Do you know that if a Muslim kill a Muslim, he will be killed? But if he kill a Muslim, he will not be killed. Do you know that the price, even there's something it's called blood money? So Islam believe in it, something is called a diya. Which means if you kill somebody, if his family agree to receive money from you, 
you will be forgiven from the penalty which this is Allah logic so if you kill somebody the price of a blood of a Muslim is it twice more expensive than the price of uh, non-Muslim and not only that even the price of a Muslim is different from the price of a slave Muslim where is the justice the guy he got killed and he was murdered so the one who murdered him should be paid the price of his punishment I'm not talking about money here I mean talking about the punishment but as you see Muhammad either way he don't care for justice where is justice imagine we have a law in USA it says if you kill a Muslim is half penalty if you killing a Christian the whole world would go crazy right but this is Islam and nobody talk about it nobody say this is not true nobody says this is a shame nobody even talk about it there is a center it's called Ernestine they make a lot of videos full of lies about Islam and they bring a bunch of American who claim to be Christians defending Islam and speaking about Islam nicely and highly be aware of the devil my friend what about this which is the same hadith that non-muslim will not be killed at all for killing non-muslims a Muslim he will not be killed if he kill a Muslim will not never don't even think about it what about this if women they committed adultery which mean they are uh, lesbian or let us say some interpretation they say this is not only about lesbian but it's about women anyway if a woman she commit a illegal uh, sexuality whatever it is the punishment for her is to be jailed in her house until she pass away look at the justice so if a woman she commit illegal sexual intercourse or sexuality with a woman women with women they have to be jailed in their houses until they die but look at this if two men have they are homo and they have illegal sexual intercourse uh, the interpretation for this is says beat them with sandals and if they repent let them go where is justice anyone can tell us where is justice in this why if the women they commit the same if we can call it the crime hmm? let us say this is the, this is the crime they are talking about why the women she will not be treated equally in the punishment with the man and let me show you that I'm not making things up I will show you the interpretation for the verse so the Muslim will not say well this guy is making things up it doesn't say that this guy is a liar you know them right let us see let us open the interpretation and see the reference all right <clears throat> this is chapter 4 verse number 15 this is tafsir ajalalain the official government website of the kingdom of jordan as for those who of your women who commit loudness adultery call for muslim men of you to witness against them and if they witness against them such as etc then put them in their house prevent them from mixing with the people until the angels of death take them to Allah no. so this is the punishment of a woman she commit illegal relationship women having sex with women or even women having sex with a man okay what is the punishment of a man having sex with the man verse number 16 is speak about that and again as you see this is not my interpretation I'm showing you in the screen I have nothing to do with it it's not me who given the meaning I'm just reading for you this is Tafsir al-Jalalain one of the highest Islamic scholars 
and this is the chapter 4 verse 16 it says and when two of your men do whatever blah 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 commit that you know there are two men you see it's two men so it's obviously it's about the first one it's about two women the second one is about two men so two men a man with man and women with women now here it's a, a man with a man if they commit uh, a, a homosexual intercourse punish them both what is the punishment insult them and beat them with sandals but if they repent let them go like what 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 do you see the justice of Allah if the women she have relationship with the women we jail them until they die but if a if a, if a guy having sex with the guy which means they are a, a gays we beat them with sandals well again he will like it he will he will get excited you beat him with sandal what does that mean why the women if she do the same same if same act she will be jailed until she die but if the man he didn't do the same act you beat him with sandal and if you repent you let him go what is this where is justice of Allah There is a there is a website of the Shia. I don't know if you if somebody can find it, you can search for it. It's it's called Shia Pan. Speaking about uh, uh, a story uh, like when Uthman ibn Affan, the Caliphate of the Muslims, was slaughtered by the Muslims. You know they they uh, uh, they torture him. They took his his beard hair one by one. This is the one who he who make the Quran. Uh, uh, before they kill him they took his beard hair by hair they torture him they beat him uh, uh, and then they cut his head and then they refused to bury him with the with the Muslims they drag his head in the ground and his 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 body and then at the end they refused to bury him they throw him in the street and then a bunch of uh, Muslims who like him they took him secretly and they buried him with between the Jews so during the what when Uthman ibn Affan he died or he was killed uh, Maybe I should not tell the story. Anyway, a guy, he was saying, if I know who killed Uthman, I should do this <laughs> to him. You know, the bad thing. If I know who did it, I would do... <laughs> a guy who was listening to this, who is obviously homo, he said, I am the one who did this to Uthman. So the other guy, he put him down and he started doing to him... <laughs> and then the... Uh, the gay underneath of the other guy he was saying if I know that killing Uthman will get me this I will kill Uthman every day and you can find this story translated by Muslims this is a Shia website translated from Muslim books you can search for it yourself it's called Shia Pan you know so look at this hypocrisy here you know actually if you have my book Six and Allah you will find the most family of Muhammad they were uh, actually almost all the tribe of Quraysh they are gays if you read and this is all from Islamic source if you read my book six and Allah I don't know how many of you have it you see the hypocrisy so Muhammad because most of the people around him they are gay he cannot be harsh on them but when Muhammad he became mixing with other people who don't like such an act Muhammad he have to show more strict rules like the Jews so he 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 want to copy the Jews he want to be like the Jews I am against it he want to show the Jews I am I am not lousy as you think in the Quran there is tons of verses showing injustice and today I'm not going 3d <clears throat> To give you endless example because a few is enough to show you how uh, funny this claim when they say that Islam is a religion of justice or who you believe Al-Qisas Al-Qisas I mean I like it when Muslim translate I mean look at this translation why you are saying Al-Qisas if you are going to translate anyway 
So al qisas is like a, the the penalty, the penalty penalty of doing a crime. So the penalty of uh, of doing a murder in the case of murder, free for the free, slave for the slave, female for the female. Muhammad he heard that the Jews have a law. It's called the, uh, the eye for an eye. And this is the funny Muhammad practicing eye for an eye. So if you kill my wife, I kill your wife. But this is not the law of Moses. <laughs> this is very silly and very stupid. This is very silly. So if you kill my slave, I kill your slave. Who is justice? And now the one who killed the killer is a free, is alive. You kill my slave, now I kill your slave. So now what we have? We have two slaves are victims. Where is where is the justice? And Muslim, they might say to you, it doesn't mean that. Let us go and see the interpretation as usual. <laughs> because you know them, right? They will say, it doesn't say that Christian prince is lying, you know. Okay, here we go. This chapter two. <clears throat> And then the Muslim, they will say to you, well, later, brother, this is abrogated. What do you mean abrogated? Allah, he found that people, they were laughing at him, at his justice. So he decided to take it off because he became the joke of the town. What do you mean Allah abrogated his verses? What kind of God? He says something in the morning, afternoon, he found that he is an idiot. And now after 1400 years, still we are laughing at, at Muhammad and his law. Read with me carefully. It says, the one slain and the action involved, a free man is killed for a free man and not for a slave. <laughs> and a slave for a slave. <laughs> and female for the female. And then Muhammad, when people they start laughing at him, he changed this rule. This rule, they will say to you, this verse is abrogated. What do you mean abrogated? Uh, because people, they will start laughing at Muhammad. What are you talking about? What female for the female, a slave for the slave? I mean, what kind of, what kind of a madness? And the free, the free man, because he killed, you know, the, the, the man who, the killer is a free. You kill my wife, I kill your wife. What about you kill my mother-in-law and I will kill yours? <laughs> I know many men, they will like that idea. <laughs> hey, Muhammad, what about you make a law? It says the one who kill his the mother-in-law, we kill his mother-in-law. This way, two men will be happy and you will go to paradise, brother. <laughs> what a madness cult. This is justice. Hmm? This is justice. Are you sure? I mean, this is too much of justice. That's a lot of justice, man. That's deep. That's very deep. This is deeper than deep. Scooby, Scooby, do what I can do. Muhammad making fatwa. Here we go. Muhammad is talking. What you can do when Muhammad talk? That's it. Muhammad. Allah is talking now, brother. Allah. This is wisdom of Allah. This is the, this is the. A lot of wisdom. What is that? <laughs> What's wrong with mother-in-law? I'm just joking. I don't have one anyway. <laughs> Let me tell you about the mother-in-law. I, I will tell you a story, which is funny, even though we changed the topic just for a break. Once I have a friend. He told me, you know, he told me his mother-in-law, which is giving him hard time. I told him, okay, have patient, whatever. Anyway, so I came to visit him, and a lady, she opened the door, and uh, I said, is he here? She said, no, I'm his mother. I said, okay. She said, just get in, drink some coffee until he, he will be here soon. So I went inside, and I'm waiting for him. Uh, so she said, uh, so uh, for how long you know him? Blah, blah. I said, well, I am here just uh, to give him uh, I mean, he told me that he have some problems with his uh, mother-in-law. She is giving him a hard time. She said, really? He said that to you. And the second she said that to me, I know that. Because she told me this is, she is his mother. 
She never said this is his mother-in-law. <laughs> it turned to be that this is mother-in-law. <laughs> oh boy. Um, uh oh. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Scooby Scooby do. <laughs> Anyway, it's like, and, you know, I, I drank my coffee and I left right away, you know. <laughs> and then he called me, he said, what you did? Do you know what you did? I said, I know exactly what I did. Don't tell me. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, my friend, the wisdom of Allah is beyond all the wisdom. Allah was like me when I told the guy mother-in-law that his mother-in-law his mother-in-law has given him a hard time. <laughs> oh, oh boy. So you Muslims, you say to us, Allah is the God of justice. Where is justice? What are you talking about? Are you serious? Are you for real? You have a God is made of, of silicone. And you try to fabricate your God. You see, the God of Islam is very stretchy, very flexible. And the Muslim, they try to fix him into the new world morality. So suddenly, Allah is a scientific God. They want to push him inside the box, and inside the computer. Allah suddenly is a computer guy. When in the time of magic, and Allah is a magical guy. In the time of, uh, 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 of fictions, Allah is a fiction guy, flying carpet. Uh, ring of Suleiman, you know, Allah is very flexible. You can you can put him anywhere. You can put him in your pocket. Very slippery guy. So they have a God. They covered him by oil and they put him anywhere. Just tell us what you like, and we will redesign Allah to make it fit with your ideas. Muslims never spoke about Allah, the God of justice, and the way they are talking about Him today. Like today, they say Allah, He respect human right. Allah, blah 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 blah. Allah, blah 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 blah. But all of this was never exist before. But this is the God which is slippery, the God which is flexible. Muslims they are willing to change their God, the nature of their God, just to make Him look like He is something. And this is why this is one of the reasons I don't respect Islam. If somebody says to me, Jesus said so, I say Jesus said so, and I believe in so, you like it, like it, you don't like it, this is what it is. Islam is not like that. Islam is a slippery cult. It's like Obama. You know, Obama with the Muslim, he's a Muslim with the Christian, he's a Christian with the Jew, he wear their hat, and with the atheist, he make fun of the, of the Bible. And with the gaze, he's a gaze, and with the straight, he's a straight, you name it. That is Islam and that is Muhammad. So my friend, be careful with this cult because they will squeeze their God in anything you like. Just tell them what you like. Suddenly, Islam support the, the feminine movement. Suddenly. How? I don't know. I just showed you how Muhammad look down at women. Women are of half a brain. Women are stupid. Women, they will go to hell. Women are bad. The man, he can have four wives. The man, he can beat his wife. Chapter 4, verse number 34. Can the woman beat her husband if he's bad? No. So why the man he can beat his wife? Yes. <laughs> you know? So be careful with this cult. It's very, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like, uh, I don't know if any of you witness a fox. You know, the fox is very smart. But he's the smart, the kind who deceive you. And this is exactly what Islam is about. Islam is religion based on deception. Everything in this cult is about deceiving. That's why my first book is called Allah, The Deception of Allah. So be careful, teach your children so they will not be deceived because they go to, to school and then you will find even a, a stupid teacher saying to him, uh, uh, not only school actually, even Christian schools, even, even church. How many of you went to the church and they said to you, Islam is an Abrahamic religion? Where this idiot who called himself a priest getting this from? What make them is Abrahamic? You see, even Jesus said to the Jews, the Jews themselves, who they are Jews, who they are descendant literally from Abraham, he said to them, if you are of your father, Abraham, you do the work of your father. Right? So he denied them to be belonging, to, to belong to, to Abraham. And those are the Jews. 
so how this religion or cult have to do with Abraham you will see even a Christian priest saying to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael what Muhammad have to do with Ishmael even Islamic books prove that Ishmael did not even marry from the tribe of Muhammad he married from the enemy of the tribe of Muhammad according to Islamic books Ishmael he learned Arabic at the age of 14 so how he can be the father of the Arab my friend be aware of stupidity and false teachers and they are exist in our churches they lie to you they fool you and everything everything today is a business everything is a perfectly correct the priest all what he wants he want to get a salary and he don't want to have headache you know like it just me say what what people like to hear and I don't want to have headache I don't want to be I don't want to be losing my job because you might lose your job by the way for saying the truth Tell you me myself I have a hard time to find somebody I can trust him to be a friend because what I do the second you start saying the truth and let us say you establish what you can call a revolution you will find yourself more and more like you are not born in your in, in the right time in order to be successful just to live I mean like like everybody just do what say what people say that's what they want you to do be perfectly correct agree don't argue don't even think they say Islam is peace say Islam is peace priest he says that bishop he says that why you will not say that huh uh, because you are a Christian and you've been taught not to lie because Jesus said what is the benefit of somebody he won the whole world but he lost his self you know his soul what is the benefit so be aware my friend of false teachers and the Bible says false teacher will be among you false teachers will be among you not only false prophets be aware my friend CP Christian Syria calling Jesus as Isa also before Islam is true no that's not true we don't know really where the name Isa is coming from because you know uh, Christians you know the name of Jesus in Arabic is this which is not Arabic anyway it is this is how the Aramaic Yeshua which is coming from the word Yeshua you see the Aramaic sometimes the letter s come as sheen and sometimes the letter sheen come as s so in Hebrew it is Yeshua in Arabic it is or the Arabic today is Yeshua but this is not an Arabic name too anyway it's just another version of the reading of uh, of Yeshua all right that is the only name we not, we never heard of Asa you will not find a Christian believe in Asa anyway in the whole Middle East who is Asa we don't know even what what is that you know uh, yeah so well yeah so will not be uh, Asa you see you know the different the, the problem is uh, people who don't speak the language they don't understand you see it is I uh, I not ya so there is a huge difference. We cannot say it was yeah, and it's a, it's not a close. You see, in, in, in English today, you are reading Isa, right? Like I, I, Isa. But this is not how it is in Arabic. It is Isa. Ah, ah. So the the letter is far away from anything. Are you getting my point? Uh, well, who who is the one saying? From where you got this that Isa is coming from Esau? What is your proof? There is no proof. This is you know people they start start guessing. Yeah, but this is not. This is you see yeah so and those. 
it is because they cannot pronounce the correct word the correct word in the Hebrew is Yeshua as simple as that so it's because it's very hard for you to pronounce it but for me I can this is why you are using yeah there's no yeah right you are saying yes like you don't you can you don't you don't know I mean that that ain't sorry you say yes 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 but there's no so no sign of Yeshua what Yeshua it is yeah Yeshua or Yeshua so there is there's letters you cannot pronounce so you replace them with letters fit with your language but where Muhammad he got with this uh, Isa from we, uh, I cannot confirm really from where I can guess you know but there's no no confirmation here they say Isa al Messiah who is the one who say only the only one who say Isa is Muslims and if you are a Christian and you say Isa that's stupid of you to say that is an insult to the Messiah you are changing his name all right a scholar from a Christian Indonesia says before this scholar is a is a is a dog he's an idiot you know when somebody he says to you he's a scholar let him show you the reference is that fair is that correct guys When somebody says something to you, he shall he have to show reference. Show us. I'm not against somebody to, to I, I want to learn to show me, no problem. So some when somebody says to you, I'm a scholar, and he says, Tell him where. Don't be don't be a, 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 a like a, a little puppy. So what if he's a scholar? Can't you ask him a question? Okay, where you got this from, Mr. Scholar? Because he was not existed at that time, so obviously he himself he learned from a book. Okay, where we can find that? And which a Christian book by those who they are in, in Syria, they are reading Isa. Where we can find? I am from the Middle East, and this is my first language. I never heard one a Christian in any church until now using the word Isa. <laughs> the only one who used is Muslims. And this is why I'm saying to you, don't follow those who claim to be Christian. So what if he claim a Christian? He claimed to be a Christian. He claimed to be a scholar. He can claim whatever he want. If he cannot prove it, we will not believe it. However, even if there's somebody, he used the word Isa. But this is not an accurate name. The accurate name is so clear. It is Yeshua. As simple as that. Correct? Even if somebody used that name, that is a false name. So, uh, you know, we say Jesus because this is how it became from the Greek. The, the, at that time, there's no even equal le le letters for that. You know, maybe many people do not know that that Latin language uh, uh, was not this the same. Even during the time of King James, not long time ago, during the time of King James, when this translation is made, there was letters that are not exist. Right. So you need to notice that even the name. In, in, in the original copy in 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 the, in the in King James, you cannot find it. Why? Because at that time there's no equal letters. Same as even Arabic. Arabic in the time of Muhammad, it was less letters from the Arabic after Muhammad. There's a guy, his name Abu Aswad Duali, uh, like you know, he's not even an Arab. A person who came and he says we will add letters to the Arabic to make it more clear. Like we have things we say, but they we, they are not letters. We they are not considered as letters, but now they are. They became letters. All right. So anyway, anyone he say anything to you, when he say uh, something, tell him okay, show me. He says to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael. Okay, show me. Is that fair? If you are sitting in the church and you have a priest with long beard. Claiming to be a scholar. Hmm? Everyone have to pay for the price of being stupid. So the second you say to him, show me, you will see how stupid he is. Because where do you get this from? You see, even if Ishmael, he did marry an Arabian woman. Arabian women mean desert women. 
Musa himself he married a desert woman but nobody says that the children of Musa are the Arab <laughs> that is silly <laughs> the child always belonged to his father there's a video of Nu'man Khan is explaining why in the Quran it says that uh, Jesus says he did not say oh my people he did not say that Musa says that why because Jesus is a son of Mary and Jesus is not considered to be from the Jews for he is not the son of a man from the Jews this is the Muslim explanation why because this is a tradition so a child he will belong to his father so uh, Ishmael is a son of Abraham from an Egyptian woman so the father is Aramaic the mother is Egyptian the son is an Arab that is the most silly argument ever you know what I mean especially if the Arab will exist if we can call them an ethnic <clears throat> Uh, our pen I don't think I cannot explain what what does that mean but uh, you know uh, we are talking about being politically correct and I don't know those countries you see Islam Islam is a political movement is not it's, it's not it's, it's a religion uh, as a as a political cult the point of Islam is to take over religion and government not to worship God to control resource, to control money, to control women, to have women for sex. So it's like a, a business club, and those who join the business, they have a privilege. Privilege of taking the neighbor wife, killing somebody, taking his money, as long as he's not from the club. Authority of being injustice, and believing that they are the best of mankind. This is why if you see Muhammad when he explained uh, he said in the Quran in chapter 3 verse 110 that Muslims are the best of mankind and what does that mean how the Muslims are the best of mankind this is what Hitler believed this is what the fascists believe they believe simply that they are the best of mankind according to Muhammad therefore a Muslim he have the right to put a chain around your neck and bring you like a dog and he is doing good job because he is saving you from going to hell he will force you to convert to Islam by putting the chain he will take you as a slave and then he will say okay well what you will you stay slave or convert to Islam you convert to Islam he keeps you slave too but he will say to you at least you will not go to hell but you will stay my slave that is Islam my friend and yet they say to you Islam is a religion of justice religion teach that a human being he have a duty and his duty because he's the best of mankind is to bring his brother in humanity with the chain around his neck and that supposedly will make you as a Muslim the best of mankind for the benefit of mankind you see the hypocrisy the benefit of mankind when you see this word benefit of mankind you think what what, the, what, the, what those people would do maybe they will generate electricity for free maybe we'll have free guys maybe everybody will have food no they will bring it bring you like a dog and they will put a chain around your neck to force you to, um, to embrace the silicon God Allah the flexible God the cult God thank you for listening and watching don't forget to download the video and enter we see you again soon may the Lord bless you this is a Christian Prince word with you and I apologize I'm not going during daytime because here things is changing here we have a lot of snow storm etc crazy stuff so like it's a winter time I know many of you now watching from Indonesia you don't have this issue uh, here we have a very nice weather outside if you uh, if you feel some heat in Indonesia put your head out of my window trust me you will not get your head back <laughs> you know always I open my window in the morning before like the first thing in the morning I open the windows all the windows even though it's really really cold but I don't care I have to fresh the house air uh, so you know to have healthy air always even if it's cold but the second you open the window it's like a sword came through unbelievable how how powerful cold is 
you know this is why I don't know many of you how if they knew that uh, cold can even break steel like once there was a big big uh, storm came to Canada and all the electric uh, steel uh, what they call in the column the one carrying this the, the electrical uh, core they collapse because the cold will make the steel is like uh, like nothing break it you know like if you have a plastic and you sit in the top of it it's going to break in two seconds because the cold will they will destroy the uh, the, the the strength of uh, of anything so cold is very powerful right and uh, if you don't have it in your area be glad not to have it it looked nice from the window but outside is not I mean what we can do this is how the earth is and we are suffering from a global warming I have to admit uh, thank you for being here may the Lord bless you and I will see you again Christ is Lord and Islam is false thank you bye bye